So, which carbon do we attack when we open an epoxide? And this is actually a more complicated question than it first appears. It would be nice if there was one rule that said, always attack the carbon on the right or whatever, right? But that's of course not the case because this is organic chemistry. We have to make it complicated. So let's take an example like this one. Uh, here we have a double bond. We can treat that with MCPBA and we'll get an epoxide. Mm -hmm. And now in this case, there is no stereocenter because we've got two methyl groups on the left and we've got two hydrogens on the right. And so there, neither of these carbons is a stereocenter. So we've kind of cheated and made it something where we don't have to worry about stereochemistry. But we know what's going to happen first. We're going to add H plus to the oxygen. And so we'll get an intermediate that looks like this. And now here's where we have to make our choice. We have to choose. Are we going to attack... The primary carbon, right? We have a primary carbon here. This carbon is only attached to one other carbon, so that makes it primary. Or are we going to attack, uh, excuse me, attack the tertiary carbon, right? It's a tertiary carbon where three other carbons are attached. And so we have a choice when we do this with our um, with our nucleophile. And because we're under acidic conditions, under acidic conditions. Our nucleophile always attacks the more substituted carbon. Okay, so you probably have questions. One, how do we know we're under acidic conditions? Well, the presence of H plus is the thing that tells us that we're under acidic conditions, right? So if you have H plus, or a Lewis acid, so some kind of metal kind of thing in there. We're not going to do a whole lot with metal-mediated epoxide openings, but there are lots of examples, if you get into the literature and stuff, where people use metals in place of H+, just because they, you have a little bit more control over where they go. Right? There's a lot of metals that really always add to oxygen, even in the presence of other things. So if you have an acid, right? so under acidic conditions, where's my pen? There we go. Things like H plus or Lewis acid, right? When those things are present, the nucleophile will always attack the more substituted carbon. So in this case, when we're choosing between the primary carbon and the tertiary carbon, our methanol will add to the tertiary carbon, break the carbon oxygen bond, and push out the oxygen. And so we end up with, and I'm going to do a minus H plus in there just to. Uh, so I don't have to draw this more than once. And you get something that looks like this, where the methanol has attacked the tertiary carbon. Okay, and so we have this OCH3 group attached to the tertiary carbon, and we have a primary alcohol. Right? This is what happens under acidic conditions. Now, if you have acidic conditions and a stereocenter, of course, you have to worry about both stereochemistry, like we talked about in the last video, and also the regiochemistry, which carbon gets attacked in these cases in this one. Okay, so um, another example. Let's do one where we've got a secondary carbon on one side and a tertiary carbon on the other. So here we have our double bond. We have a secondary carbon on one side. We have a tertiary carbon on the other. Hopefully this is kind of reminding you of Markovnikov's rule or, or Zaitsev's rule, right? Where we, we're looking at the two carbons where the double bond is going to be and kind of comparing which uh, carbon has more substitution or less substitution or whatever, right? So we have a secondary carbon here because it's attached to two carbons. We have a tertiary carbon here because it's attached to three carbons. We treat it with MCPBA. This is another one where we don't have to worry about stereochemistry because one of the sides of our Epoxide is symmetric, so there's no stereocenter on this side with the tertiary side, which means we don't have to worry about it on the other side either. And now let's say we treat it H plus, and I'm going to use what we use to uh, as our nucleophile here. Let's use um, let's use a nitrogen. Will that work? We can try it. Why not? Let's use a nitrogen. So let's use. Um, Ethylamine. That's fine. 
epoxide picks up H plus. And we get our activated epoxide. Now this thing is ready for a nucleophile to attack. The nucleophile, right, remember that we have a secondary carbon here, a tertiary carbon here. The nucleophile will attack the more substituted position, the tertiary carbon. We're going to break that carbon oxygen pi bond. We're going to add to the, or not pi bond, carbon oxygen sigma bond and add an electron pair to the oxygen. That means we end up with the OH on the less substituted position and we have the nitrogen on the more substituted position like that right so this is the kind of analysis that i'm going to expect you to be able to do you're going to have to uh, find which carbon of the epoxide is more substituted or less substituted and then add under acidic conditions we're always going to add the nucleophile to the more substituted position so, of course, this raises the question, what if we are not under acidic conditions? The next video will talk about what happens when we're under basic conditions and what types of nucleophiles do we use uh, that will kind of always function under those conditions.